Africa is a basket case. Fifteen years ago, countries around the world, faced with the growing realities of food shortages and depleting natural resources, turned to Africa as their primary source of investment. Africa's new democratic leaders seem to hold the hope for a new generation of wealth and prosperity for the continent. Young democratic leadership was eager to demonstrate their effectiveness to both their people and to the world. Negotiations with trading partners in the East, India and China resulted in much growth in infrastructure and rapid short-term economic growth as investment poured into countries and exports poured out. For a while, signs of growth and development were everywhere and countries were at peace as evidence of growth and development became visible. New roads and houses were built, dams were constructed and electricity became a reality for many people. China and India brought in many of their own people to build and construct, but African governments were grateful for the investment and knew that the infrastructure would have long-term benefits for their people. In return for investment in local infrastructure, African governments allowed foreigners to buy land or gain 99-year leases. This seemed to make sense as the land was to be utilized for maximum wealth creation. Oil supply was plentiful and Africa became the biggest exporter of fuel, timber, fresh produce and minerals. Governments became wealthy as a result of lease agreements, the sale of land and their share of profits required from foreign traders. The race for Africa's resources was on and Africa was ready to trade. Jungles were mined for minerals and chopped down for timber, which was exported to China. Oil production was outsourced to foreign companies, offering large returns to governments. China and India's demand for food meant that rice was farmed in abundance, requiring large amounts of water. Crops grown began to reflect the taste and demands of Africa's trading partners in the East. Africa's relaxed environmental policies, along with cheap labor, means that this also becomes the preferred global destination for high pollution factories. Japan, India and China also find a destination for their motor vehicles that are no longer saleable in their countries due to increasing restrictions on CO2 emissions. Africa's population is ecstatic as cars become affordable. With increased infrastructure and peace across the continent, Tourism began to flourish as foreigners poured in to experience some of the most unspoiled places on earth. Large multinational hotel chains began to open resorts across the continent to accommodate this trade. Wooden carvings from ancient trees in the jungles, along with expensive jewelry made from gold, platinum and precious stones and animal skins became the most popular curios and the demand resulted in mass production in Chinese-owned factories. Another export begins to become popular, namely the export of exotic meats. The jungles become a hunting ground for foreign buyers who are prepared to pay top dollar for exotic tastes. This utopia is not to last. Despite the growth and development across the continent, young Africans began to become frustrated with the lack of opportunities for them as most large companies were foreign and brought in their own skilled labor. With the spread of technology and the ease of access to mobile platforms, Africa's youth begins to mobilize itself and the first signs of unrest begin to occur. With the lack of crop rotation, the water-intensive crops grown as well as deforestation and polluting factories, the effects of climate change are dramatically exacerbated. Desertification starts to occur and previously fertile land becomes depleted of minerals farming becomes less profitable. With the focus being on the export of raw materials, including fresh produce and the depleting food supplies, food becomes unaffordable to local people. With the rapid extraction licenses provided to foreign mines and fuel producers, these two activities begin to result in less yields. Frustration leads to violence as local youth mobilize around the lack of jobs, increased starvation and hopelessness. African leadership despairs as the realization sets in that short-sighted foreign economic policy and relaxed environmental laws have meant that foreigners now own and drive the majority of economic growth and this economic growth has not led to better living conditions for Africa's people. In effect, Africa has been colonized again. 
while the new colonists are not interested in political power, they have slowly acquired the rights to most of Africa's wealth. Infrastructure starts to erode as there is no foreign interest in maintaining it, and with the rising violence and food shortages in Africa, local funds are allocated elsewhere. Once again, Africa becomes dependent on aid and the support of foreign troops to quell local violence.